Hey y'all, this is Stephanie of the Hardy Wrestling Podcast, and I wanted to take this time to show and send my love and condolences to the family of Tina Turner, who is the queen of rock and roll, who we did lose on yesterday due to natural causes. I wanted to take this time to talk about how amazing she was to me and how much she inspired me to have the energy to dance like a crazy person and like with freedom and to have the strength to rise above any adversities that came to stand in um, my way. Um, I just wanted to come on here and say that she has been such an inspiration to me and so many and to so many black women and just people in general all over the world. And her voice was just the strongest and most amazing thing I've ever heard and still and am in awe of to this day. And I just wanted to pay tribute to her at this point because music is a big part of my life. Music was has been a big part of the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. And she is a part of the evolution of music as a whole. So much love to Queen Mother, Anna Mae Bullock, Tina Turner. May she rest in peace and may she continue to inspire generations of women to be free and be resilient and also be beautiful and human and flawed all at the same time. We love you. This is the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Making her way to the mic. They start dimming the lights. You start feeling all right. From Birmingham, home of the Teddy Longs and the Ruben Stutters. More once you discover. For all of the lovers, Whitney Houston and Roman Reigns. For all of the lovers, and Mickey James and Marvin Gaye. For all of the lovers, and Sasha Banks, Janelle Monet, Silk, Sonic, and Paige. Allow me to say. Look, I just found a place, sweet escape for every one of us I was kinda late, cause I just made it off the struggle bus Walking by the fate, cause I know it's right in front of us Yo, I ain't with the hate, gotta focus on what's great but Ladies and gentlemen, Steph Hardy is on the air Had to drop a couple bars just to make you all aware So, sit back, relax, enjoy the show You know I go by Joe or the rest of the Hey y'all, welcome to the Hardy Wrestling Podcast live vibe. I'm your girl Stephanie Hardy. Um, and thank you guys so much for joining me on this Thursday night where we're on the precipice of a huge, huge wrestling week between Impact Wrestling Under Siege, Night of Champions, Battleground from NXT, as well as AEW's Double or Nothing. I am so excited for this weekend. There's so much happening um this past, like this whole wrestling weekend and i'm just so excited and hopefully my guests will be able to pop back in pretty soon because i did have her pop out for a second to do the tribute um but either way um it's such a huge wrestling weekend and i just want to thank all of you for supporting the show and supporting um us and the brand as a whole and there's just so much happening this weekend and so much that has already happened and i'm just so excited to have a new special guest on the show for the sixth season of the hardy wrestling podcast you might know her as one of the most outspoken and most amazing black women in the wrestling content creation space she is also a commentator and you can catch her on multiple shows including white noise with drip from the black wrestling podcast but most importantly, you can catch her on her own platform on All Elite with Keeks. This is Miss Keeks, Ke- or Kiki is what I call her, but it is so great to have you on my show. How are you? I am doing wonderful. Thank you for having me on. And I want to say your intro music is a vibe. I was over here like, <laughs> and I also want to let everybody know the part where Stephanie is walking out of the ring. I recorded it when I was there. You sure did. <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, yeah. Photo cred me. Yes. Yes. That was, yes, that yes. was so much fun. 
Yeah, that was such a moment. Like, I love that you recorded it. And I'm so happy that I found out that you recorded it. Because when I needed it, I was just like, I need this. But I can't remember who recorded it. And I was just like, oh, wait, it was Kiki. And so I went back and asked you. And I was like, I need the video. And you sent it. And everything was fine. Yeah. <laughs> and it was it was so funny. And that was the very first entrance I ever did at a wrestling event that I was working, ever. Did like, you have to cut out my back? Because I'm, yes! Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Like we had to cut it out. Um, but the sound was out on all of that whole montage. Shout out for shout out to Simon Vision Media for creating that intro, which gets compliments every time I come on and have a guest on, and I love it. And of course, shout out to Wrestle and Flow for doing the theme song. But yeah, like it was just a really cool thing to do. I wanted a theme song and it's you know, coalesce of everything I've done so far. And hopefully I can add more to it, but I'm just really happy that you were able to contribute to it in that way and that you got it on tape and you were just rooting for me and yelling for me the whole time. It was just like, oh my God. <laughs> From the panel and everything, I was just like, cause uh, I know when uh, Eric from Black, uh, um, shoot, I can't even think of the name right now, but when he posted all the pictures from that weekend and uh, they was under like, look at Kiki, just look at that stuff. I'm like, I was, I was so proud of her. Yes, I was looking at her like that. Like, I knew that's right. Oh, <laughs> that is but so I, am, so I love seeing you. I love seeing your light shine because you are, you doing it like your whole thing is a flex. I'm like, look at her. I love seeing you your elements. Definitely like for real. Oh, well, thank you. And I love mm -hmm. seeing you and yours, too, because, of course, we're here to talk about you. <laughs> Everybody already knows about me on this show, but we all here to talk about you. OK, yes, so <laughs> as we get it cracking, I have to ask you, when did you fall in love with wrestling? I fell in love with wrestling. I would say I was around five, six years old because uh, my mom was a wrestling fan. Uh, so she was always watching. So I just started watching along with her. And then um I started watching WWE, well, if at the time. And then, of course, I was watching WCW. Uh, so I had to choose uh, either Nitro or it was Raw, one or the other. So being part of, you know, being a child during the Monday Night Wars is was an experience. It was fun. It was nothing like it. You had to either record one and catch that one the other day and watch one live. And that was me. So... But yeah, I would have to say around five. I was like five because I want to say it was around when I was in the first grade. So around that age, that time frame. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because that's when I started watching it too. Except it was my daddy, you know, who was taping it, you know, because he had to work on Mondays. Mm -hmm. So he would like use the actual VHS tape <laughs> and <laughs> tape Raw and Nitro back to back because you couldn't miss anything right. at all during that time. So I started off as a WCW girl because that's what I saw. I would see that first and then the raw part would play and then I would see everything that way. And it was, and I didn't know, of course, at the time that there was a war happening because <laughs> <laughs> when you're a child, you just watch your TV. You don't know what I'm going like, on while you've grown up. But, <laughs> yeah, but you don't know that there's like a whole back and forth going on. But either way, it was still, you know, enthralling to me and I never quit. So it's pretty clear that it was something that resonated with you, you know, really um, hard with you watching it, you know, with your mom and then going on to watch it with yourself. So what was it that like kept you enthralled with it? Like what kept you, you know, in it? WCW Cruiserweight Division. That got that started my love for wrestling. Like the Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, Chris Jericho, Rey Mysterio, uh, um, Name that should not be named. Um, <laughs> just yeah. the, the whole W, like uh, uh, that uh, influenced my love with lucha wrestling because that was my first time actually seeing them on TV, too. So the whole WCW cruiserweight division got my love for wrestling, and that's when I'm just like, I like, I like this, and then of course. On WWE side, with the entertainment, with Stone Cold came into play, just like, oh, okay, yes, he get to beat up his boss. I like that. I <laughs> like that. He beating up his boss every Monday. Beer, uh, the beer thing, and uh, just different things until like the whole um, Undertaker putting Boss Man on the. My granny was like, uh, uh, no, oh no, not in this house. 
Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, that's that started my love, and now I've just been loving it ever since. It's it's hard because they do things. I'm just like, oh my god, but I still have love for it, and it just keep the innocent child in you, you know, your inner childhood, and it just keeps it there. So. I'm going to always love wrestling. Even though I don't like some of the stuff they do, I'm just always still have my love for it. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny you brought up, you know, the WCW Cruiserweight, you know, division. And it's like, in more recent years, like, you don't, it's like, well, not even in recent years, but kind of like in the Ruthless Aggression era and on the shows like SmackDown and stuff, like they their Cruiserweight division was kind of like popping off and that used to be my favorite and you would see so many people like Brian Kendrick and like so many others like Tajiri and mm -hmm. Eddie and you know Ray and stuff like that and they would compete at the highest level at that point and that was where I really found out what a cruiserweight really even was because at the time all I knew was heavyweight and a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on heavyweight because of course that's the bigger title yeah. but then when you think of cruiserweight and you see the way that they move it's like they have all these muscles and stuff but yet they can still move really fast. And that was always entertaining for me to look at. So that's something that I feel like needs to be appreciated a whole lot more yes. um, now at this stage in wrestling. Like I feel like a cruise, like the cruiserweight division um, in WWE in more recent years when they had the classic, I absolutely enjoyed that. And that's how I discovered people like um, TJ Perkins or TJP now and like Cedric Alexander, who I fell in love with. Like, I like those are the type of this, that's the type of new stuff that I like to see. And when they got rid of it, my heart was broken. I was just like, so we ain't gonna do the cruise away. So right. but I get it. But I totally get that that was always, you know, a hype thing to look at back in the day because you have the bigger names like Ray Mysterio, who's in the Hall of Fame now. And Eddie Guerrero too like those are names that are Hall of Fame worthy and they started in the cruiserweight division mm -hmm. that wasn't valued as much back then because of all the politics and all the NWO of it all and all that but at the same time when you go back and look at that older stuff you realize there was a lot of treasure in it yeah so, and it's probably more the more the most influence in modern day wrestling now that we like we see WCW Cruiserweight Division in modern day wrestling right now. Like yes. um, I, I've said recently, um, it's been a while, but I think Gunther is the best, you know, he's bringing the prestige back in the Intercontinental Championship. We haven't seen that in a while. So I like right. that he has the title. Like he's making it important. It always been important to me because they're the workhorses. They are literally like the next heavyweight coming soon. Like that's really what it's about. And you know, we, you know, I'm an AEW fan and we have people like Orange Cassidy with the All Atlantic Championship. Like he's doing the same thing. He's the workhorse. Uh, you know, you just have to value the, as they say, the little guys, but you have to value those things because it means something. It's the bread and butter of your product. It yeah. People in the seats. Like we know people are there to see the main event, but you got to filter out until you get there. So that's what the cruise away is for. Let them cook. Absolutely. I really agree with that. So I love that that's, you know, what really like kept you in it and stuff. And you are right. You know, there is stuff that does happen. You know, it does keep you in touch with your inner child. And But, you know, the older you get, the more aware you become of things. And then, of course, it's even more amplified because we're all more social online and stuff. And then you hear yeah. things, you know, and you see things, you see rumors and stuff like that. And it does make you upset. But, you know, you know, as the it's the love that kind of pushes you through the tough parts. Yeah. It really is. It really is. So I completely understand it. So when was the point in your life where you decided, you know, that you were going to, you know, lend your voice to wrestling media and the wrestling content, you know, community as a whole? I just was tired of tweeting about it. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. like, why do I just say something? And then COVID hit and that was the perfect time to kind of start doing it. But I did start off as a writer first and then it just worked my way there. And then I saw how the politics was with the writing. I'm like, oh, hell no. Let me. Well, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to no, say it. Cool. OK, but I was just like, oh, no, I can't do that. And then so I just started doing content and just let my voice be heard. I'm like, somebody got to say something. I want to say something, you know. So and it's been there ever since. Um. 
you know, I know I have the, the reputation of saying things that shouldn't be said, but it has to be said. Somebody has to say it. So why not be me? Okay. And when you say writing, like, did you mean like writing for like a company or writing mm -hmm. like, okay, who, who are you writing for? Um, you don't mind me asking. I I, I'm not going to say their names. They know who they are, but okay. um, it was an uh, a incident where I pitched in, I want to do something about Jacqueline. And the comment was, um, that's a little bit controversial. We don't want that attention to our brand. And that's when I was like, okay, this is not for me. Okay. Okay. That's all you had to say. And oh. yeah, one of those. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Well, you know, it just goes to show that some opportunities, you know, are for you and others aren't. But, mm -hmm. you know, you have to go where your, you know, thoughts are valued. And I do appreciate that you did share that, you know, to a degree. So I get that. But, you know, it's clear that you're in a good place regardless. Yeah. <laughs> so your voice is valued in other places. So, you know, I hope that that situation, you know, you know, really did prepare. It, it has propelled you forward. So oh, yeah. I totally get it. So, and it's so funny. You said that it was after a little bit after the pandemic for you. And when you started your platform, like I started mine before the pandemic, like at the beginning of February was when I started this show. Oh. And it was just kind of like, I didn't know what was on the horizon, you know, at that point, like I was just at home, you know, going on job interviews because at the time I had, you know, lost my job, you know, but it had nothing to do with COVID or whatever. And I was just like, well, what am I going to do? And then I felt like, well, at this point, I think, you know, it's podcast time because I had been throwing the idea around in my head for like uh, for like months, but I just didn't know how I was going to do it. And, you know, I did it and it was just audio based for a long time until I transitioned to where we are now. But yeah, um, <laughs> the pandemic shook up a lot of stuff, like, for a lot of people. Like, it was, like, a transition period for some people. Mm -hmm. Like, it was a, a a time where we all just had to realize, you know, come to grips with this new reality while also figuring out more of who we are. So is that basically, like, accurate for you? Like, how else did you, you know, deal with the pandemic and rise above it? Um. I agree with you. It was definitely time, like a self-reflecting, like what it is that I really want to do, what it is that makes me happy. And then of course, during that period, that was like a little bit of me being a single mom as well. So I was still figuring that out. And then also like, what do I really want to do? What do I, and then also I want to add, that was probably the best period for wrestling. Cause it just shows that fans do matter. Like, Fans' mm -hmm. presence do matter. Like, you see... And then it also gave uh, creatives to be a little bit more creative. They had no choice but to be creative. So we saw some really good stuff from most of the major uh, promotions in wrestling. Um, even though it was a little pause for the indie wrestlers. But the major wrestling, they really, really did um, do their part. Um, especially for the networks. When things was on hold and they had to rely on wrestling like we see it now the writer's block is happening now they really have to rely on wrestling and real sports like okay we gotta rely on real sports and wrestling because y'all we don't want to pay them right now but so we need money though so but yes it was definitely a healing pe period for me because i got over my situation my in my personal life and started to evolve better as a single mom and as well as a woman Yes, definitely. And what up, Vaughn? Vaughn hey, is Vaughn. saying hi to you. Thank you for watching from Facebook. And thank everyone <laughs> from wa for watching on all platforms. Thank you. And of course, you can watch this later um, <laughs> if you can't, aren't able to watch it now. But yeah, it's just, it was just a really crazy time. But in terms of sports, though, it's just, it was just so insane to see all the sports just kind of come to an end, you know, and everything just come to a complete stop. But wrestling kept going. And I can't tell you how many interviews I've had, you know, with wrestlers at that time over the over the that period that we're talking about ways in which they stayed, you know, on top of everything, you know, physically, mentally and emotionally, because it was hard for them to not be able to have that level of work, you know, anymore. Mm -hmm. 
in terms of wrestling. Like it was really painful sometimes to listen to these people who, you know, love wrestling to their core. Like that's their bread and butter for them. And then they can't do it because there's, you know, this disease. Of course, we couldn't control that part. Yeah. But yeah, it was just a time. But I I took solace in knowing that these people were still fighting and still trying their best to make the best of the situation and getting more in their creative bag and doing promos and still practicing and still keeping their craft alive. So I admire every person in wrestling that tried to keep it to keep that spark alive even when stuff, you know, kind of just came to a halt in the Indies. But as far as TV was concerned, like, I I just remember how all the fans were like, I don't know if I can watch wrestling. There's no fans there. But in my mind, I was like, I've been watching wrestling my whole life. I'm not going to stop. Right. <laughs> I'm just not going to stop ever. We've I'm been through some dark ages in wrestling. We're not about to let no absence mm-hmm. of the fans stop us. <laughs> Not at all. Like, I just couldn't do it. So I was just like, you know, I'm going to watch it and see what happens. And creatively, you can tell there was a lot of stuff popping off, you know, for the wrestlers, for, you know, people back behind the scenes and everything. They tried, everybody in wrestling tried their best to give us the best show possible because they knew it was crazy out there. So they wanted to give us, you know, something special that we would still remember. And I'm forever grateful to them for that. Like, seriously, like. I'm grateful all always for wrestling, but definitely grateful for that period because it was rough. It was but, very rough. <laughs> <laughs> it was rough, but we got through it, and here we are. So. <laughs> right. Uh, kudos to Sasha Banks, well, Mercedes, but Sasha Banks at that time, Bailey. It was Sasha Bailey. I would say Drew McIntyre, yes. Kenny Omega, uh, Young Bucks, and John Moxley. Mm-hmm. Y'all were they they them six they definitely made sure like we gotta keep it we gotta keep it active so people you know still listen still listen then of course they adjust the whole screens for uh WWE and then Daily's place at AEW they let few people in they just have to be masked so yeah we got through it mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, and the Thunderdome, of course. <laughs> and, no, we're you know, not and speaking of Tina Turner, like the Thunderdome. So it's just <laughs> like they kept they kept it creative and they kept it going for us. And so I remember it was so hurtful because wrestling hadn't come to Birmingham in two years after that point. And I would just look, and because I work in downtown Birmingham, I would look at the BJCC and just manifest in my head like, one day, Lord, one day, we're going to get another show. We're going to get another show. We're going to get another show. We're going to see the trucks again. We're going to get, we're going to get it, okay? And then the BJCC finally, like, we got it refurbished and everything. And when they came back, it was a party. Yeah, y'all was live. I saw that. Y'all was live. Yes. Having a good time. Oh, my (laughs) God. Having a good time. (laughs) Having the time of my life, okay. You like, saw Roman, seriously. right? Um, no, we didn't see Roman, but we did oh. see Brock. Um, okay. yeah, Brock beat up on Paul Heyman, I believe, and I be- and this was also the SmackDown where Biggie got injured. Oh, yeah, me and my boyfriend we witnessed that firsthand. It was oh, it was my. tough. And that was also the first time I heard Samantha Irvin live and realized how powerful her voice was and how. <laughs> And how exciting she is, like, right then, like, in the in-between when it was commercial time, and they have the activities that they have the crowd doing everything, like, she made an announcement for DX Cam, and the way that she started saying the intro to the DX song, it sounded like she was going to get ready to sing, and it got me crunk. Like, I was like, okay! She's like, and that was when... Good. She's so good. I she love reminded me of Lillian Garcia, for real. Yes. Oh my God. Could you imagine a car with the both of them together? I would cry. <laughs> I would cry. Oh my God. Ah. I would too. But she keep keep her forever because she is really great. She's great at what she does. Like yes. And then just the characterizations that she adds to people's names and stuff. It just fits the characters. I'm just like, man. Like she yes. hit me. Like, yeah, that's. I feel so like if I was a wrestler, she'd not be like, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because she come with it, especially when she do her boyfriend. I'm like, I know that's right, because that would be me. Ricochet! I'm like, I know that's right. You better add the egg. <laughs> exactly. And then when, and the way she announces Imperium too, oh, that's, that's a vibe. I love it. 
I love it. I just love everything Samantha Urban does. This is a Samantha Urban stan account. (laughs) (laughs) Literally. She is. I think Roman really likes her too. Like, I love she announced me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a big deal. (laughs) I love her. But yeah, um, and going back to you though, like, what in starting off, you know, with your platform, like, did you know immediately, like, did you start off just wanting to talk about AEW or were you talking about everything and then eventually transition into just talking about AEW? Because you seem really passionate about them. Um, well, I'm people will say I'm a wrestling historian. Um, I just like talking about the history of everything, but I am a huge fan of AEW, so I was just like. We need some more black people to talk about AEW. Why don't I just talk about them too? Well, a female at that. So I was like, I'll just do a AEW. So I shot my shot at Graham from uh, Public Enemies. I said, why don't y'all just add an AEW-based show on y'all stuff? And he was just like, you know what? That's a good idea. So I did that. And here we are, all elite geeks. And... You know, I I still watch WWE because I'm still fans of WWE, but you will never see me hate watching WWE. That's a waste of time. But I watch it because I am still fans of wrestlers. Like, they still have AJ Styles. They still have, uh, um, you know, my girl Bianca Belair. I still, I'm still a huge fan of Bianca, so, of course, I'm going to support her. Oscars over there. Like, I'm still fans of wrestlers over there. Like, I may not agree with everything backstage but i am still a fan of some of these people that's over there so i'm gonna still support them so yeah i watch them but yeah my show is based off of aew because i'm a fan of aew it just remind me of the crew like it remind me of wcw in a way and i was a fan of wcw so yeah i watch everybody well it's mm-hmm. a but i i still watch <laughs> yeah okay yeah that's valid you know it's just a it's just you know in seeing your show, it's like your show is really rare, you know, in terms of black women, you know, talking about AEW in that way. And I think that's great, you know, and it's just like, you seem so very passionate about everything that they have going on all the time. And I know like between you and also between Jobber Tears, shout out to them. I can always know what's going on with AEW, even even in the moments or the weeks where I'm not able to catch it. Um, Because I was covering Rampage on Women's Wrestling Talk, but then we've shuffled some things around because of course Collision is on the horizon. I'm going to talk to you about that. But it's just, (laughs) yeah, so it's just like, you know, when I was watching Rampage, I would go back and watch um, Dynamite just to see, you know, how they feed into each other so I could be well informed. Um, But between you and Jobber Tears, I always kind of know what's going on and, you know, the people that I do keep up with and stuff. And with AEW, the thing that I love about it is the fact that it is an alternative for people who want to be on a higher level in terms of notoriety in wrestling, but they don't, but they have another option. And for a long time, there weren't that many options because WWE, you know, bought them up and stuff like that. And it's just for a long time, there wasn't that many options outside of, you know, impact and TNA and the independence. And then you also threw in, you know, ring of honor, which had its sort of resurgence and stuff like that. But as in terms of a larger level, you didn't have that. And then when AEW came into existence, you had more opportunities for that. So that's the thing that I would say I love the most about AEW is that people have another place that they want to go, you know, and it fits more of the type of people who just want to watch something else outside of that thing. And that's okay. If mm. you want to watch both shows or all the shows or everything and support wrestling as a collective, you know, or you have this one show that you really love, like that's perfectly fine. So, um who would you say is your absolute favorite right now in AEW that's really shaking up the table you know that you can't wait to see do bigger things or just doing big things right now besides my go um I would say I am of course I'm a huge Orange Cassidy fan I am a Moxley fan uh Brian Danielson I love Kenny Omega Adam Page that's the man uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm a fan of a lot of them, but I would say, but it's hard because I'm biased because my favorite is still over there is Jericho. Y'all know I'm a big Jericho stan, so he's over there, so that's my favorite. 
<laughs> yeah. And, you know, you did actually just have a stream, you know, about Chris Jericho just now. Like, mm -hmm. um, I think that's really cool that you're still, you know, addressing the people that you love who is your goat. And, you know, Chris Jericho, he might be a little bit, you know, crazy at times in terms of certain things that he might say that might rub people the wrong way. But you cannot deny his impact in wrestling and how he's continued to um, keep himself relevant, you know, during a time in which wrestling is always evolving, but yet he, yet and still he's still relevant within wrestling, you know, and is easily anybody in anybody's top 10 or top five. You know, because yeah. he's just so good at what he does, not just character wise, but also in the ring. He was definitely one of my favorites growing up and everything. And also my boyfriends, too. Like, I'll <laughs> never forget when me and my boyfriend started talking. He would lose his mind over Chris Jericho's theme song. And it was just so hilarious. So that's really what made me fully appreciate him. Like, Chris Jericho is hilarious. Um, in terms of his character work, he just continues to evolve all of the time. Like when he retires, it's gonna be a huge deal. Check on me when that happens. I'm check on I'll me. Call you. I gotta say, <laughs> check on me. Just, I'll be there. <laughs> yes, I'll be there. Especially if they induct him in that Hall of Fame, I'm I'm gonna be right there. Oh my serious. god! I'm like oh my god, because if people don't know, I stopped watching WCW when he left. So I everywhere he went, I went too. Basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> I followed the wrestler. I understand, so I understand that. So I understand the crew, uh, the Mercedes Monet fans. I understand what y'all did because I did the same thing. That was me when he joined New Japan. I was like, "What's going on over here?" So y'all help me. What am I learning? Because I know he gonna be over there. That was me. So I got it. Exactly. <laughs> you see this flag in the background? Like that's been my life. <laughs> When Mercedes and Trinity left, I was like, look, wherever they go, I'm going to watch it. So it's Trinity's on Impact. I'm watching it. Mercedes is on New Japan and Stardom. I'm watching it. Right. And it's just, you know, and creating content out of that. So, you know, I completely get the idea of following a wrestler. Because it used to be back in the day when, of course, you know, when you're a kid, you're just doing what whatever you can. And you're just watching a wrestling that's most accessible to you. Um, so usually when your favorite wrestler would leave WWE or anywhere else, you know, you just wouldn't see them anymore until years later. And then they pop back up in WWE. But now everything is more accessible now and you can watch wrestling anywhere and everywhere. So if your favorite wrestler leaves, that doesn't have to be the end. And I'm so glad <laughs> that that's the case. Oh my God. I'm so happy that that's the case and that you can have an open mind and expose yourself to new things because I had never really watched Japanese women's wrestling like that, you know, before. And now with Mercedes being there, and then also with um, one of the women being number one on the women's 150 in PWI, that made me want to pay it more attention and actually expand my palette a little bit more. And I'm glad that stuff like that is happening now. It's with, cool. With uh, because I know for me, um, I have a friend named Mika because that's who I started doing content with at first, and then he was just like, Go ahead and do it on your own because I don't care to be talking every week. But he's a big New Japan and stardom and all and uh you know uh no Noah. Yeah, Noah. Yeah, Noah wrestling. <laughs> you know I, I asked him, I'm just like, is this person good? Who is this? What are, and he'll give me the whole rundown. So I have somebody to help me with that because I, I only keep up with New Japan when it gets around um the tournament and also around Wrestle Kingdom when they have uh AEW wrestlers that's on there and if it's part mm -hmm. of a storyline. That's heading towards Forbidden Door. That's when I just keep up, like, okay, so I can make sure I'm I know how it's gonna go. So that way I can keep on my toes with my show. Like this is happening because this happened and this happened. So mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Like it's it's really good to be able to expand what you know um in terms of wrestling. It's still the thing that you love, but it's a different sort of like a it's like wrestling is a tree. And <laughs> All of the wrestling promotions and all the different types of wrestling are all branches and twigs. And then once it when it branches out, you realize it's just a really nice big tree. I don't know why I'm using this, but either way, you get the point. <laughs> yeah. Some yeah. have more leaves on the branches than others. <laughs> yeah, and some have fruit, you know, but either way, you know, you have you a good garden, and wrestling is a garden. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I, I was not expecting to use like 
botany in, <laughs> in this in this thing, but here we are. <laughs> it's funny. So what would you say is probably like the biggest obstacle that you faced, you know, in using your voice in wrestling and how have you overcome it? Oh man, uh, where do I start? Um, speaking truth and um, mostly that, uh, mostly speaking truth or addressing something that needs to be addressed and um Everybody know me, I'm going to either say something back, I'm a rebuttal to it, or I will ask you what's the problem. And now I am starting to learn to just ignore because it's going to happen regardless if I address it or not. So I'm working on that. Um, not everything needs to be addressed, is which is one of my biggest things that I am working on about myself. But also, I just don't want to always be too silent because when you're too silent, I think it's okay to continue to do it. So right. that's just been one of my obstacles is to know what to um, react to and know what not to react to. But yeah, like Vaughn say, I'm just a straight shooter. I'm going to just say it. Like, I know people want to say it and I understand, you know, why you can't say it. So I'm going to say it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's just one of my obstacles just to know when to react or when to ignore and not to give in sometimes because some people want my reaction i'm learning that people love that like i want to get that out of her so i'm just learning to not address everything so. yeah like i understand <laughs> that you have to have that spirit of discernment because you know wrestling um, as beautiful as it is, you know, with the advent of social media and stuff, you know, people kind of just come out and say things and sort of just put stuff out there and then they, you know, just say it and it can make you upset to the point to where you do want to say something, you know, but you do also have to choose your battles. And mm -hmm. that's how you, you know, remain healthy and, you know, you don't let the negativity sort of spoil what you love because, you know, if you keep, if you do keep reacting to everything, you know, it'll take a lot of energy out of you and you won't have it to put into other things that are actually positive and actually good. So I am glad that you are learning that, but everybody's learning that. Like every human has had to do that, you know, a lot of different times. Like, well, should I react to this? Should I not react to this? You know, am I reacting enough? Like, do, should I, you know, it's hard because you want to show people that you are not to be messed with, <laughs> but at the same time, you don't want to necessarily like, fight so hard that it's draining you either so you do have to have discernment and we're all learning that you know and it can be hard but at least you know you know that you are willing to put in the work to right. keep you know doing better so yeah I'm glad that that's your journey and that you know you are learning it and that's a good thing in Blackfist he's saying hello hello thank hey. you for watching on YouTube hey Blackfist and yeah, my daughter in the background, she's under the table. I don't know what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. We love the kids here. It's, I don't know what she doing. <laughs> it's okay. So, how would you say what are some things that you do outside of wrestling? You know, if what does Kiki do to relax, or you know, what does she like to do to you know unwind and just have fun a bit? What do you do? Motherhood for one, um, my kids definitely keep me sane. Um, being involved, they love going to the park. We have our, you know, our movie nights and stuff like that. If y'all follow my TikTok and Instagram, I post what we do most of the time and we're always outside. So um, I like doing things like I always take myself to the movies. Um, when I was married, I used to do it all the time with him, but I do it with myself sometimes, you know, just a self date. I take myself out to eat, uh, get a glass of wine here and there or hang out with my friends because those stuff is healthy to keep you balanced. You know, you want to not always everything is wrestling. Everything is social media. So I always make sure I go outside and touch grass, as they say. <laughs> Yes, definitely. And I love, you know, of course, we're friends, you know, on social media. And I just love seeing you be a mother because it's just like because I hold I'm, I'm not a mom myself, but I hold my mom in really high, high regard. And it's just like I love her so much. So whenever I see mothers, 
you know, doing the dang thing, especially, you know, whether it's with a partner or without a partner, I still think it's the most beautiful thing on the planet. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just love how you love on your children. It is so, it is such a blessing to see, you know, that you're doing it. And I love children myself. So it's just like, your kids are beautiful and they look just like you. And it's just like, oh my God, like, it's just the sweetest thing. And it just makes my heart swell. And then on top of that, you know, you balance everything. And I know it can't be easy, but you still press forward and do it anyway. And I love that you still take care of yourself in that as well. Like, you do have to date yourself because I know what I like to do sometimes. I like to, like, go to Barnes & Noble and just disappear in books and magazines. Or I like going to the grocery store because for some reason that's something that I do love to do <laughs> um, for self-care. And I did used to go to the movies by myself too, but somehow or another that that I kind of stopped that and I feel like I need to do that again. Um, but yeah, um, self-care is absolutely important. And then I also like to just watch reruns of Girlfriends over and over again. I'm a repeat oh, watcher. Man, I'm a repeat I, watcher. <laughs> I re watch it as an adult. I'm just like, these girls really just didn't like each other like that. Why was they oh, girl. in the first place? Don't get me started. Oh man, <laughs> no, it's not funny. Get me started. <laughs> It's really funny like that. See, see the way you watch it, you know, back as an adult, like I wasn't watching it as a kid. I just, <laughs> I, um, hello, I wasn't watching it as a kid, but my uh, mom was, and it would just be on in passing, but I didn't know what they were talking about. Mm-hmm. All I knew is that it was black women on TV and, and that was enough for me. So when they put it on Netflix, I was able to watch it through as an adult. And I was like, wow, this show is really good. But then at the same time, the stuff that they did was just yeah. kind of like, oh my God, it's crazy. Like oh, as an adult, now you're just like, this wouldn't fly now. <laughs> Why is you? I'm like, you doing this on her day? Why you pick all days to do? I'm like, oh right. Lord. Right. Like it was it was issues. And then on top of that, I feel like it was just issues that they would spill on each other because they didn't ever really check themselves within mm-hmm. with that self-care. Like, really honestly. A lot of those issues could have been solved if they went to therapy, if I'm being completely honest. But, you know, back then, they weren't having the conversation of therapy back then in our community. So I come so crazy. Oh, yeah. So we don't do that stuff. Yeah. And they actually mentioned that on the show one time. So it's like, you know, they were saying like stuff like black people don't go to therapy. You need to just pray it away. But now if it was on now, then they would definitely have to continue with therapy and just keep it going. Um, but yeah, like girlfriends is still, you know, a a one show to me. So I still watch that to relax and just to laugh at it. So I mean, it's whatever. Or I'll watch the Parkers, you know, just for fun. Oh yeah. Like mm-hmm. I just rewatch stuff over and over again. It's crazy. But yeah, that's just my um thing that I like to do to relax and stuff. So um how let's just talk about wrestling a little bit more um how would you say you feel about the state of wrestling and what's great about it and what could be improved upon i would say the state of wrestling this is the first time in a long time it's been fun like on both ends like yes it's we have lows on both ends that needs to be worked on but it was a point that the rest of we saw the WrestleMania main event was uh uh Jack Swagger and uh and uh you know uh oh my god so yeah when main event, we we was in the trenches we was in the <laughs> trenches in wrestling <laughs> so we in a fun period oh, right now like even with the alternative it's just making it fun like they are subliminally keeping on each other's toes so it's good for the fans overall like they did this so we need to do this they did this so we need to do this so it's everybody's kind of winning so it's fun everything is fun we haven't had fun in a long time so um it's in a good state like it's of course things need to be worked in the <laughs> Set in the mud. <laughs> it's not in the mud, but it's, you know, it, it's fun. Of course, social media. Now, I would say social media, it it can make it not fun with social media some, at times because of the fans. And now that fans have voices yeah. and it's insufferable at times. But 
I could say we're in a fun period in wrestling because we was in a trend before. <laughs> so I'm 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 grateful of what I'm getting right now because we was looking at Alberto Del Rio and Jack Swagger. That was the main event for WrestleMania. Yeah, kids, we was in the trenches. Oh man, it's so funny you said that. Like that, I've watched so much wrestling over the years. So I can't even. I couldn't even. I completely forgot that that had happened. Like, oh my god, that really did happen at one point. But yeah, it's just so funny how people would say, you know, that back then during that period, that was kind of like a like a in the mud period. <laughs> but for me, I guess because back then I was just kind of still watching it. I really just didn't. I was. Well, I, I didn't was see it. it. I didn't see it that way because I was just always watching. I was like, okay, Jack Swagger finna fight up under the real. Here we go. You know. But to a lot of people back then, it was just like, okay, this was not the best. And then I guess this is where I would have to go back and look at it just to see. But yeah, like it's, oh, uh, yeah, it's funny to hear other people's, you know, perspectives on how wrestling was back then. But to me, I was just like, okay, here we are. This is what they're presenting. And this is just me accepting it. But yeah, to a lot of people, it wasn't exactly the best. That's just like how when I got older, I started and in, in interacting more with the internet wrestling community. That was how I learned that people don't like WrestleMania 27. But it's awkward to me because I actually went to that with my dad and my sister and I had the best time. <laughs> and I was 17 back then. So I was just having fun and just enjoying the last wrestling event I was going to before I went to school. And I was just there and I was just happy to be there. We were in Atlanta. It was my first time, whatever. But then I get online years later and everybody was like, this is the worst WrestleMania ever. And I'm just like, that's just like last year. That was like, oh, that WrestleMania last year was terrible in Dallas, and I was like, dang, I had no, fun. No, I said I had fun. I made the WrestleMania in Dallas was great. Fun. I had fun. Now the main event, that's a different story, but I had fun. Yeah, I did too. I enjoyed it. You had Sammy in the Jackass match with you know Johnny Knoxville. Excuse me. Like you had Bianca and Becky. I mean, that match was fantastic, and that build-up mm -hmm. was great. And her entrance, I still watch to this day. I mean, come on. Like, it was not. Like, the WrestleMania in Texas, I really enjoyed it. Like, I wish I could have gone to that one because that one was fun. But this one, this year, was great, too. Like, being in California was a vibe. I, I know. You it. had a good time. I saw the pictures. I said, look at her. Oh, Are my God. I had some of her. Huh? You going to the Philly? I'm going to try. Okay, because I'll be here. Okay. I've been voluntold. So <laughs> <laughs> I've been voluntold. So I'm more than sure somehow or another it's it's going to happen. And I am excited because I've never been to Philadelphia. You know, like, so that would be a very interesting experience. Like, really, the furthest up north I've ever been to was New York. Yeah. You know? We had a blast in New York. <laughs> Yeah, we did. And yes, Vaughn, I have been voluntold <laughs> that, um, you know, you volunteered, you know, where someone said, do you want to? But then they say, yeah, you're coming. Like, that's how it was. Yeah, you going. Um, and, I'm going to be there. So you going. Yeah. Drip is saying, like, things can age poorly in wrestling, but some things age like fine wine as well. Yes, you are absolutely right. You really are right about that. Like, some things can, you know, age, uh, age out a bit, you know, a lot. But then, you know. Some stuff does, you know, get better. And Vaughn Wilkins did not volunteer tell me um in LA. It was it was actually um Mimi from Black Wrestling. She volunteered me. <laughs> but it was in love, you know, because I love her, so it's okay. Um, so yeah, Kiki um doing the mom thing. <laughs> She's she trying to work the microwave to warm up her pizza and she's not getting it. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> no, you're good. You're you're absolutely fine. I get it. So, what would you say is <laughs> doing the mom thing again? I love it. Um, what would you say is something? How do you feel about the state of women's wrestling as a whole, and what's good about it, and what could be better about it? Because I do, in my mind, I do have to separate. Like, what is what is the best thing, and what could be improved upon in women's wrestling to you? I do love that we finally have a black woman, two of them that are in this long reigns with their belt and they're being displayed, you know, in a platform and being, you know, we, we have that. Um, but we still have a lot of work to do with women's wrestling. Um, more time. 
more creativity. It's time to put black women in that creative room when it comes to women's wrestling. Um, we, we, we just still have work to do. It, uh, more, like I said, more time. I will say NXT is doing a wonderful job displaying women's wrestling. I feel like they probably, them and Impact, even though I don't watch the Knockouts division as much, but those two, they are doing a wonderful job displaying women's wrestling as it should be. Uh, they're getting more screen time, uh, in-ring time, and they are just being looked at as superstars. I know people joke about NXT being goofy and stuff like that, but what they're doing with women's wrestling, you know, we're not seeing it even in AEW or in uh, WWE. So I can say that. Um, so I want to see more, especially with AEW. They they still working on it. Women business is still work to do, but I can say it's better than the state that it was two years ago, but it's still a lot of work to do. And then WWE don't, Y'all kind of reclining for what the, uh, you know, the four horse women and also the deep, you know, uh, the Bellas and what they worked so hard for. So, you know, don't, re you know, don't circle back, you know, don't use the women empowerment as a phase. Keep it going because there was a period where the women's division in WWE was carrying the brand during a dark time. So remember that because they are. They are money. Let them cook. So that's that's how I feel right now in the state of women's wrestling. Exactly. It was a really good answer. Like, because it's just, there is so much that is going on for the good, especially for Black women. And I feel like um, something that isn't being addressed enough is, of course, you had resurgence this past weekend. And you had Willow Nightingale versus Mercedes Monet you know, for the um, New Japan strong women's title. And I feel like a bigger deal should be made of the fact that these are two black women at the top of their game yes. fighting each other. Because I feel like when it came to Mercedes fighting Bianca, that was a huge deal. But I feel like that's a huge deal based on the platform it was on. And that's something mm -hmm. that couldn't necessarily be helped. And they utilized that and they put it out there and they won awards and all the, you know, do respect that they deserve for that but i feel like more of that should happen for mercedes and willow because of course you know yeah willow is a new face to a lot of people but at the same time she's been wrestling for years and she's been working in the indies for years and just doing everything that she could to get better at her craft and she really did take mercedes to the limit you know even though unfortunately mercedes did get injured and they didn't go for a lot longer than they could have yeah they still did a good job with the time that they did have and it's wonderful that Willow has won a title because she was one of my favorites to beat Jade for the TBS title at some point because I just love her and I love her energy and I'm so happy that I got to meet her last year for Black Girl Magic and yeah. call her action. So to see where she is now, it's just a beautiful thing, but I feel like more of a bigger deal should be made out of that. Like we, we are in terms of Black women making spaces, like you have Jade, you have Bianca, you have Willow. You have Mercedes and Trinity now who aren't even holding titles, but are always in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful thing to see, you know, I wish I could have saw it when I was a kid, but I'm not mad about it that it's happening now because of course, you know, in you being a mother with your children in the background, they get to see it if they even like wrestling. I don't know. But either way, you know, they get to see stuff like that and representation is important, but then also, behind the scenes creatively you do need more black women back there you know creatively in in higher positions and when you get them you can't silence them you can't tell them that they're doing too much you have to listen you really have to open your ears and listen even though it might be uncomfortable for you you have to listen to them and not run them away yes um because like, we we're ready to counter what you're saying because we have the champions we, we got bianca Athena, ROH, like yes, her too. <laughs> uh, like I said, Willow, and uh, also today during the um the um what what you call it? Uh, Tony Khan did today the, the media call uh, media call when he said that Willow was the best representative for AEW for the New Japan Strong Tournament, and I was like, finally, yes, thank you. I've been saying it. I've been saying it because who else was you gonna put over there? Okay. <laughs> 
Thanks. Yes, like Willow, like she's just really great. And I'm just happy that she has this opportunity. And she does take a lot of, you know, brutality from people in comment sections. But, you know, those are haters. We're not going to give them yeah. any power. Like Willow is amazing and she's gifted and she's only going to get better from here. And I'm just so proud that her and Mercedes have made that history. And I feel like it should just be talked about a whole lot more in wrestling spaces. This is the second time black women have main evented a pay-per-view. The second time. Like, that's insane. And that's New the second Japan. Time. New right. Japan. And then, right. And then on top of that, Mercedes has been in both of them. That's amazing. <laughs> Listen, Mercedes is probably the best women's wrestler of this era period in america whatever period she is really it, it speaks for itself now i'm a charlotte girl i love the queen i love charlotte but mercedes is the best right now she she is the best she's versatile uh, i hope she gets well soon because my fantasy booking for her i really want to see her versus Fabi apache i just got to see it i know she trained with her but i want to see it i got to see yes. it like, I want to see Mercedes, like, in CMLL because the way that she was fighting Stephanie Bacour in that tournament, like, in the first mm -hmm. round, I was like, come on. Like, I want to see her, you know, go to Mexico a little bit, too. So I do hope she does get better, but she is definitely my GOAT, and I've said that ad nauseum on this show. If I talk any more about how much of a GOAT she is, I feel like people will stop listening to me. So <laughs> like, like, literally, like, I have a whole series about every match she's done so far. So I can't, if I go any any more into it, folks might get sick of me. <laughs> so just let me die. But either way, I completely understand. Like, we are shaking the table, and I'm so proud of us. Yeah. You know, and there's still so much more that we have, you know, to give. So there's a big week. This We got a big weekend coming up in terms of wrestling. Mm -hmm. Like, tomorrow we have Under Siege and Impact. We have Night of Champions, um, which is which will technically be in the daytime for us, but you know, you get it. Night of Champions. Um, and then we also have Double or Nothing on AEW, then we also have NXT Battleground. So with all of that being said, what are you the most excited about to see this weekend? You already know it's double or nothing. Um, like I said on my show, my goat is going to be on his 49th pay-per-view headline in his careers. And uh, of course, it's against Adam Cole. Adam Cole ain't mind his business, so he gonna get beat up. <laughs> Adam Cole, baby. but yes, uh, I'm looking forward to Double or Nothing. But I'm also looking forward to uh, Night of Champions because uh, Bianca and Oscar they are really good. They have good chemistry in the ring, and I am ready to see that. Um, who else is on that court? And I saw um, you do have AJ and Seth Rollins in the tournament for the yes. World Heavyweight Title. Yes, I want to see that. And then, of course, I ain't, is it Roman Reigns in the tag match? Against? Yes, it's Roman and Solo versus Sammy and Kevin. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, it's going to be some good wrestling this weekend. Memorial Day. Nobody got to work on Monday. Turn up wrestling. <laughs> absolutely like it's gonna be fun because usually AEW, you know their events can can be, be can be a bit lengthy but <laughs> you know and it hurts you know because you you got to go to work the next day but this time you know it's on memorial day so you yeah. can go to sleep you know after it goes off and everything but i am excited to see jade versus um taya again oh yeah yeah i'm sorry oh, I, forgot about I am so excited to see that like mm -hmm. i want like, I want to know if Jay really is going to win this time because it seems like Taya, you know, since the suspension's been lifted, the band's been lifted off of Valhalla, you know, like I'm on the road to Valhalla anyway. Like, I'm excited to see how it turns out. And I want Jay to possibly cosplay as Tina Turner. Um, I put that picture out there today. Yes, I saw it. That like, would be so. But I mean, she doesn't have to do it, of course. Yes. I mean, she doesn't have to do it, of course. Like, it's her choice ultimately. But if she did it, I would die. But either way, I mean, like, I'm excited called to see it. That. She called it. She called it. <laughs> oh my God. Give me my credit. <laughs> I would die. But, you know, she doesn't have to. If she decides, you know, to do it, it's fine. But if not, then that's fine too. But, you know, she's done a lot with that title. So I'm, I'm really happy for her. Mm -hmm. And to see her in other spaces where you normally wouldn't see people talking about wrestling, like she was 
at a um some type of session involving AT&T Dream in Black. So I love seeing her in other spaces talking about wrestling like that, like with Essence Magazine and stuff like that. So that's that really good Blige, um, It was the Mary J. Blige event. Um, She has it in Atlanta, I think. Um, oh, okay. Because I, I want to go. I was like, that's on my bucket list. I think this is her second year doing it. It's like a big thing for uh, actresses, women in content, things like that. I'm just like, I got to look more into it because Maybe we could be like, look. Yeah, that would be amazing for us. Wrestling, we can do like a little panel there. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I would love that. That would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm really excited with everything going on this weekend. There's lots of crazy stuff happening. I'm also excited about Trinity and um Giselle Shaw. <laughs> oh, I'm really yeah. pumped about that. Like. That's going to be really good. So um, it's just a lot of exciting things happening. So um, before I let you go, I do have one more question for you. Actually, two. Who is your favorite wrestler from Texas? Because you are the queen of Texas, okay? You rep Texas down. So who is your favorite wrestler from Texas? She's not from Texas, baby. She said, Sasha Banks. Oh, He's not from Texas either. Um, <laughs> Stone Cold. Um, yeah. And then Indy Wise is definitely a, a bounty keep. Uh, you got yeah. That's our. That's that's yeah. But Stone Cold. Indy Wise. And also Jacqueline, Jackie, 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 Miss Jackie. She from out here. Liz, Jackie is as well. So Jackie and Stone Cold, them two. Yeah, that's a really solid fave. Like, I love that. Like, I, that is a really solid top three from Texas because it's just, yeah. <laughs> like, that's just really great. Like, when you think of wrestling in Texas, you think of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Like, have you been to the Sportatorium? Um, when I was a, they, I was a kid when they uh, tore down because nobody would buy the property. And they decided to make it into a park parking lot of this um because you know uh we do um bull riding so they tore it down to make it a parking lot um and it was around two thousand I had to be like seven or eight when they tore it down but my mom yes because you know in Dallas you do not talk bad about the Von Erics the Von exactly. Eric, you do not talk bad about Von Erics Von Erics means so much especially to the black community out here because they did for the community like they had a whole program um and it used to run for a long time it was uh reading with the Von Erics and they will always go to the schools in the urban communities like um in the Oak Cliff South Dallas area and just read to the kids um and they they was at block parties like you look up and you see the Von Erics at a block party a bunch of always like they was always outside and they always did for the community like black kids got in for free at the sportatorium and all of that like they meant so much to everybody out there so it was just so the tragedy of them but even my mom to this day, you cannot say nothing bad about the Von Erics. They do not play about the Von Erics to this day. So uh, so my mom was like, they better get the series right. I know they better get it right because <laughs> we know. So I unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to be at the Sportatorium. But let my mom tell you, she done seen Undertaker when he was younger, uh, Shawn Michaels when he was younger there, of course, Ric Flair. Uh, Jerry King Lawler at the time, like at, your favorites was at the Sportatorium. And if your favorites wasn't at the Sportatorium, they was dodging it. Cause everybody know you was either in Memphis in the South or you was in Florida or you was at the Sportatorium. And if you weren't there, then you were scared. <laughs> wow. That's mm-hmm. so amazing. I never knew that about the Von Erics. Like that's so cool that they used to do you know, for the black community in, in Texas. That's amazing. Like, that's a part that I never really knew. Because, you know, growing up with my dad, we would watch older DVDs and stuff, and they would talk so much about the history of wrestling a lot of the time. And just hearing about them, it was like, it was clear that they were respected, you know. And even now, it's like their story is still, you know, intriguing to this day. So I really do hope that, that the movie or the, or the series or whatever it is, you know, does get it right. I hope and, they showed that side of them too, because they, yeah. they really did for the people out here. Like they was just like, you know, it's black kids that like wrestling too. They, you know, it don't have to be just one way. Like Carrie Von Erich was heavy on it. So 
I hope they really just show that side of them. We know about the tragedy, but show that side because they was really out here doing it. Like they black, they all I'm saying, like block parties. You in South Dallas, like what's the Bunnies doing in South Dallas? They was in South Dallas, you know, they daddy didn't like that, but still, they was still outside doing for the for the people. So that is really important to show that side that the Von Erics was for for the people out here. So they mean a lot to the older black people out here. They really do. Yes, absolutely. That is so cool to know. I'm going to clip that out and share that. That's amazing. So what would you say the future holds for you, Keeks? Oh, um, hopefully... Uh, it turns into something. I know I have things in the works I can't announce, but I just hope that, you know, the heat that I take, I hope it just makes it easier for the next up and coming so that way they can have a smooth transition into being into content. Um, you know, it's some talented Black women that are wrestling fans and they have a lot to bring to the table. And, you know, if I get, you know, if I take the, the the punching bags and all that to make a smooth path for the next people, then I will do that because we're just as talented as the other people out there. It's different variations of us with different personalities, with information and things like that. So that's all I, I just want, you know, not even for me, I just want to see more of us getting the respect that we deserve. I just want to see more of us and, you know, behind the scenes, even in these major promotions, I want to see more of us. So whatever it needs to be done to have that happen, it needs to happen. So that's what I want to see. If I can, if it's a way that I can be a part of that, I would love to be a part of that. Absolutely. Well, Kiki, it was so great to have you on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. Like I love your content and I love your passion and I absolutely love the fact that, you know, you and I have met each other and have worked together um, on Katrina's panel, of course, the women of color and wrestling panel. And we met each other in New York for black wrestle fest and all of that. And I'm just so, yeah, I'm just so happy. we've. <laughs> I'm just so happy we've connected and I do consider you a sister in this thing. And I know that, you know, you will always have my back and I'll always have yours. Always. So, yes. So I'm just so happy we have our sisterhood and it's just a great thing. So just tell everybody where they can find and follow you and you, what you have going on. Of okay. Course. I'm sorry. Uh, you can find me on, uh, of course, uh, like and subscribe to Public Enemies Podcast. Um, you can find me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Um, now, I don't, I can't remember my TikTok name off, off the top, but on Twitter, uh, it's all elite kinks. Uh, also on Instagram, it's the same. Um, TikTok is AE Kicks one. I think it's something like that. So yes, you. But if you want to uh, see where my ad is, you can just follow Public Enemies, and they always retweet me, and they have me on the bios and things like this. So that's where you can catch me on Mondays on live. Of course, I run the same time around Raw, but it's okay. Y'all can put Raw on mute and still listen, or you can <laughs> put me on mute and watch Raw because I know the goal is for me, honestly. If you don't watch AEW, at least you can listen to my show to keep up of what's going on with All Elite, you know, what's going on with AEW. That's that's all I'm bringing to the table for people that don't watch because you just, you know, but you're in content and you got to see what's going on. That's what I'm here for. So. Absolutely. Then you're going to have more content because, you know, collisions coming up and then. Like, are you going to, like, are you going to have, I guess this is a bonus question. Are you going to have like two shows a week or one show a week? Like, or, like you do or what? How are you going to figure that out? I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still, no, I'm not crying, baby. I'm sorry. I'm still trying to figure it out. Yes, but Ooh. I trust that you will, though, because, I mean, that's great for them that they have a third show and a third, you know, brand. Um, but it is kind of crazy, though, because a part of me was like, first of all, WOW comes on on Saturdays, too. So it's just kind of like, uh, but, you know, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's, it's going to be fine. And I for the first time. Um, I saw it come on. I don't know if it was like a rerun or something, but I caught it yesterday and I was just watching. I was like, Vice City got wow, okay, I can start watching this because I like what I saw. 
it was some girl she has a gimmick where she's like a skater um oh wow and yeah, that's um, boxy fears i like her yeah i like her she's good and she's pretty i like her I yeah we her yeah, we interviewed her on Women's Wrestling Talk for Black History Month. She's such a, you know, nice person. Like, I love interviewing her. She's from Washington, D.C. Like, she is really an amazing wrestler. And I love WOW so much. And I love covering it because it's an all-female show. And it's just like, yeah. yes. Like, I it's like a really it. good show. I like, I like it. That. It's really cool. So, you, it comes on live every Saturdays? Well, no. Um well, it comes on on different times for different people in different areas. Like in Alabama, for me, it comes on at 6 p.m. Uh -huh. um, but then you'd have to go on their website to figure out where it comes on for you. Like you just type in the um, zip code and then they'll show you what channels it come on. Okay, because I'm going to start watching because I like what I saw. It bless you, baby. I like what I saw. All right, good. So <laughs> now we're really finished with our time together. It's, it's, it's so funny. But yeah, you can follow me um, and watch me, of course, on Instagram and Twitter at Queen Seth Hardy. Listen to the show everywhere you get your podcast, audio-wise. And also watch the videos on the YouTube channel, The Hardy Wrestling Podcast, and just continue to support the brand. And, of course, you can catch me on Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet, on Mondays for the WOW Superheroes After Show with um, Katrina Blake and um, Emily May Heller, as well as on the SmackDown After Show with Dreon Santana, our editor-in-chief. So, until next time, this has been The Hardy Wrestling Podcast with me and Miss Keeks. And until next time, bye, y'all!